following on from the last video, we are now going to examine the problem that makes up the why the mass gain or all out aesthetic physique are not the best approach for optimum testosterone levels. Now, I made claims in the last video about the ideal physique for testosterone, and I defied popular thinking and said that the bulked up mass gain physique is not the optimum physique for the long term maintenance of testosterone levels. So in this video, I'm going to relate as to the, the why or the problem that occurs with mass gain and why it's not so good in the long term maintenance of testosterone levels. Now, most guys who start out in physical training notice that in the beginning, after a few months of training, um, a tolerance to physical activity has been built up that they begin to feel better, they have more energy, and they notice changes happening to their musculature. Now, this continues for the first two to maybe five years without usually manifesting any problems. Now, eventually, a plateau in size gains is reached, and this is when the problems usually begin to occur. Any of you that have been training for any length of time will know, or maybe you've experienced this plateau. Now, the problem that begins to occur is because we stop making gains and gains become harder you know and but we still want to make further gains but in the time we have been already making gains we are also at the same time have been building up a tolerance to exercise the longer we continue to exercise the more our body gets used to it and then it becomes a normal, regular habit. And the downside to this is that the way our body responds to the exercise diminishes in terms of size gains. This means the longer we train and the longer we keep up the habit of engaging in regular training, the less gains we will make and the harder those gains that we do make will be harder to materialize and especially to maintain we naturally hit a plateau and this is completely normal in anybody who trains in a natural way. Now for anybody who trains naturally um, there will be a maximum rate of muscle gain that you can achieve. This will vary for each individual but it's largely determined by genetics, size and bone structure but typically in the first year you know this is an average doesn't necessarily apply to you but typically in the first year you can expect to see gains in lean muscle mass of up to 20 to 25 pounds or around two pounds per month this is because your body responds much better to training as a beginner now as tolerance to training is built up in the second year this can drop to up to 10 to 12 pounds or around one pound of muscle gains per month in year three, five to six pounds or 0 0.5 pounds of muscle gains per month is realistic. Year four, that can get down to as much as two or three pounds of gains. And in years five or more, you can be gaining as little as one pound for the whole year. You know, not what you want to hear, but this is the truth for real, authentic naturals. This is the truth. The more training experience you have, the more muscle that you've already gained, the slower your rate of muscle gain becomes. This will vary depending on things such as body type, metabolic rate, uh, insulin sensitivity and nutrient uptake. And these are realistic expect expectations for most of us. We all have a genetic limit as to how much muscle we can gain. And this does not correlate to testosterone levels. This is determined by our genetic makeup. Androgen sensitivity can influence this process and can help us to get better results. But ultimately, it's all down to our genetics, a fact that we have to accept. Now, the only way to go above and beyond our genetic limit is to use anabolic steroids or other unnatural performance enhancing methods you know there will be many that say i've got no idea what i'm talking about but you know many of these people are probably using performance enhancing drugs you know this is the truth you know we have a genetic potential anyone who is honest to their audience as a fitness influencer will state this truth anyone with any real knowledge 
in physical training, long-term knowledge will know that this is true. Anybody who has trained naturally for any length of time will also know that this is true. You know, when we look um, on, <clears throat> on social media at the many physique examples, you know, we see massive and lean cut bodies of men who claim they're natural when in reality they're not. This is misleading and it can give you unrealistic expect expectations. You know, we've all been there, myself included. When I first started training, I thought I could get the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger with only training and consuming adequate protein. You know how wrong I was. Now, at this point of plateau, we tend to begin looking for new training routines, diets, supplements, you know, to squeeze out some additional gains. When we do this, we are attempting to stretch our natural genetic potential for increasing size and mass. Our bone structure is the size that it is when we reach adulthood. This means that we only have so much potential for increasing our size naturally. The norm for many guys when this happens is to try and push through this plateau and to continue trying to increase gains in muscle mass. I went through this myself a little more than 20 years ago. Now we see enhanced guys in the gym and with the naivety that comes with a lack of experience, we do not realise that these results are extremely unlikely training in a natural state. You know, we're looking up to them and trying to be, get a physique like they have. Now, online, there have been many fitness influencers who are obvious gym veterans who've been training for many years who have claimed to have packed on 30, 40, 50 or more pounds of lean muscle mass in a natural way after many years of training. And in, you know, in most cases, this is probably not true, at least the part about them being natural. How much muscle mass will it be? possible for you to pack on after reaching your genetic size potential is determined by that genetic size potential for a 200 pound guy an increase of muscle mass of 30 pound although difficult is entirely possible but if this was achieved naturally of that 30 pound you know as much as 15 maybe 20 pounds in some cases of that will be fat because for natural athletes it's much easier to gain fat than it is to gain muscle you know, they will not look lean and cut, you know, and then when they cut, they will probably lose around half of their size gains. You know, fact, for someone like me at around 55 to 60 kilos, it would be extremely unlikely that someone my size will ever gain 30 pounds of lean muscle mass after reaching their genetic limit. But you've got many people on platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Insta, who are claiming that they have made these sort of gains naturally. You know, they, they're bullshitting their audiences and misleading their audiences. You know, any guy that's enhanced using steroids or TRT or performance enhancing drugs that's honest enough to tell their audience the truth, you know, this is good character, you know, you know, salute you. But anybody who is misleading them, bullshitting their audience and saying they're natural when you're not, you know, you're, you're a low life piece of shit, in my opinion. Now, it's one thing to increase your muscle mass, but it's another thing entirely to maintain those gains long term. Now, in fact, trying to maintain those gains long term can be detrimental to long term maintenance of testosterone levels. And in this series, there are quite a few elements to this to consider, you know, and I'll be covering all of this in this series. This is when the problem starts to occur. To make size gains, a caloric surplus is required. Now, caloric surplus requires more energy for digestion. You know, um, not many people know this, but it actually takes energy to digest food. Of course, food gives us energy, but it also depletes energy in the digestive process. Now, it takes a significant amount of energy to digest food. I will go into this in more de detail in another video, but suffice it to say here for now is that eating depletes testosterone. You doubt me? Well, this is why when you go to a clinic to have blood drawn for a testosterone test, they advise you to come early in the morning and not eat anything before the test. Why? Because eating beforehand will give you a lower result. Eating depletes testosterone. And this depletion of testosterone levels 
happens to many guys when they attempt to push past their natural size potential and their natural genetics. It places a much higher level of unnecessary stress on the body and its energy levels. You end up in a constantly in a state of digestion, consuming higher amounts of energy and depleting vital force in the process. For those of you who are spiritually awakened, you will know what I mean by vital force. And it's pretty important for you know longevity, testosterone, the whole thing. I'll go into that later, maybe in another series. Anyway, after observing this kind of regime for any length of time, a fact is that many of these guys notice that they're not recovering as well as they used to from exercise. They notice a decline in energy and vitality levels. They have less motivation and enthusiasm. They're feeling run down. They gain no real satisfaction from training like they used to. They've got a loss of strength, loss of stamina, decreased libido, poor moods. And these are all, of course, symptoms of reduced testosterone. <clears throat> and this is now becoming a common occurrence in guys who train with a focus towards gaining size and mass after reaching full genetic potential in terms of muscle gains. To keep going when this happens, the only solution that many end up resorting to is jumping on steroids or TRT to keep up their progress. And this is what ultimately happens to many men when they have an unrealistic expectation as to muscle gains. And this fact forms the basis of why many guys jump on steroids after a number of years of training naturally. Now, in those who stay natural, they tend to continue attempting to bulk anyway, you know, but they still spend <coughs> many years in a significant caloric surplus in trying to do so. And some years later, they discover that they have low testosterone. They cannot understand why, because they seem to have been doing everything correctly, leading healthy lifestyles, eating a good diet and everything. Now, I will go into further detail in another video as to why this is not good for long-term maintenance of healthy testosterone levels. Because um, you might turn around and say, but the studies say, because you will rely on studies, you know, everyone relies on studies now. The you know free thinker and the ability to think for oneself is fast becoming extinct. You know the studies into training, muscle mass, and the corresponding effects to testosterone say otherwise. You know training promotes and helps to maintain healthy testosterone levels, and it does. So we will go into that in the next video. The studies. Subscribe to this channel and follow this series for more.